All right, CNT125, we're on to our network design lab. So I downloaded a copy of the lab here, um, and from D2L, you'll notice there's a lab there, a podcast. I have a link for diagrams.net. Uh, I have a podcast reminding you how to do a network diagram. I have a helpful information file, which we'll come back to, and some useful links. And I also have a packet tracer file that can be used to practice or prep for the lab. I will come back to that as well. So pay attention to all those resources that are available for you on this lab. All right, let's take a look at what we need to do in the lab. Then we'll go through a couple specifics um, and how you need to get yourself ready to do the lab. So first thing here. Um, the focus of the lab is really pulled together a whole bunch of pieces you've done this semester into a design. You design and implement a network. And the kind of the quickest way I can describe this is if you remember in CNT 120, you had to make a network map and pick out, pick out some equipment to make a, a network for a customer. Um, so you did kind of like the first step. I go, oh, this is, this is our plan. This is what we're going to do for you. Well, this semester, we're taking that a step further. We're going to plan it out for them. We're then going to actually hook it up and implement it, saying, well, here's our plan for you, and then, you know, here's a working model to get you the network that you need for your site. That's what we're going to do. We're basically taking what we did in 120 a step further and implementing what we did. So just keep that in mind. And it's really going to be pulling pieces together from all semester, too. All right, the first page here is what we would call the needs assessment. As we met with a customer, these were we took notes on what the customer needed. I'm going to keep going for now. Part one is where we're going to start on our network design lab. Um, the first piece we're going to do is our network design map, if you will. We're going to make a map of our plan. Um, just like at the beginning of any lab I give you, I have a map there filled out. Um, and as the semester went on, I started leaving blanks and you filled it out. Well, this time you're going to do pretty much from the get-go. You're going to come up with a plan, um, IP scheme, ports, VLANs, etc., for the customer site. And I'm going to want, to want you to make it on a program like diagrams.net so you have a clean digital copy of your plan. Um, and now I'm going to remind you, you're going to print out a copy and bring it to the lab because that is your plan for you getting your design working. And then when you're done, you're going to submit this plan along with your network files, along with your router and switch files, if you will. You'll submit this saying, this was my plan, and here's my file showing that my plan worked. Okay, so that's part one. We will start this together, and I'm going to give you time to work on this and get help um, so you know you're on the right track. Part two is we're going to hook it up and make it work in the lab room. Uh, we'll actually hook, it, hook your design up and make it work in the lab room. So here is a list of tasks you'll need to do. Again, we'll come back to this. Um, cabling up your network. I remind you about when you apply power to things. The kinds of things you need to configure on your switch, including the console password and the telnet access. Uh, router, same thing, console password, here's your console password, enable password, um, SSH access, and then the specific sub-interfaces, DHCP, NAT, etc. that you'll need to do. We are going to configure phones too, um, so you're looking back at your phone lab to help with that. And then once everything's working, I'm going to have a required access list you need to do uh, to filter, wire, filter the wireless users. This is pretty much the... the um, pretty much the same access list we did with the second part of the security lab. Actually, no, excuse me, the network management wireless lab. Uh, this is pretty much the access list you did there. That'll be required. And I do have an option here. You can do some extra and put an extra access list in for the IP phones. But again, I always say here, make sure you do this after everything's working and if you have time. We'll then need to hook your workstations up and test your network. So I have some things here about you'll cable one PC up to one of the phones. You'll connect the other phone directly into the switch. Um, you're going to take the other PC and hook it into a Wi-Fi VLAN port. Um, check that. And then you're going to check to, can you get an IP? Can you browse to Google? You know, can the phones call each other? Can the use, wireless users, you know, get an IP, get out to Google homepage, if you will. Um, and then here is a uh, another bonus you can work in. If you get everything up and working, uh, then add in the wireless access point you did with the wireless lab. Um, get one of those out of the cabinet, configure it, add it into your network so you legit have wireless on your network. 
And then last but not least, troubleshooting. Troubleshoot anything uh, that's not functioning in your network. Um, and you're going to be the first troubleshooter because you designed the network and implemented it. So you're the first person that needs to troubleshoot your design. You're the one that knows what you did, so you're the first person to troubleshoot. Um, so I remind you here about things you do and also remind you about, you know, if you're having issues, take your access list off. Uh, you know, put it in notepad so you have it, delete it off the router, and then check your functionality. If it works, great. When you put the access list back, if it does not, well, then something on your access list is not right. That's another tip I give you here on troubleshooting. Uh, once it's all working as it should, you're going to demo this functioning to me. Um, there's actually points I'm giving you for seeing it function and work. So that's why I have this in big font, italicized and highlighted for you. Make sure you show me. And what I'll do is I will check that the workstations can get an IP and browse out. The phones can call each other. And then the wireless traffic is getting filtered. And I'll just check all those off. Um, and the rest of the stuff I'll get from your configs when you submit them. Last but not least is what you're submitting. You're going to submit your router config, your switch config, and your network map. And I'll remind you when we go over the lab and when we get done, if you make changes to your map as you're implementing your network, that's fine. Just update your map, update your network map, export a new copy, and then submit that to D2L because that's your that's your schematic. That's your game plan of what you're doing in your network. So I will I will literally load I will load your um text files um, and then I'll load your map and I'll look at the map compared to your router and switch text files and go yep looks like the VLANs are there yep looks like the subnets are there etc and then I have your cleanup commands here um, to, to clean it up so that is the gist of what you're doing if I keep going here's the grade sheet of all the things we're checking off um, number of points on the map a number of points on your switch config number of points on your basic router config and the number of points on your advanced like nat dhcp kind of config voice over ip and then down here um the testing these are the things that i will check off while we're in the lab room and have everything hooked up i have a little chart that i'll check off that i saw yes that worked on yours yes that worked on yours and so forth um so as you see down here we're about a, about the 80 point ballpark for this lab this lab is probably about twice the points of regular lab because you're doing a lot of work. Um, and reminder, this goes into a separate grade column in D2L for you. This is not lumped in with the other labs. This is lumped into a separate grade column. Um, if you look back at your syllabus, that'll show you how many points it's worth. So this is one of those labs don't skip because um, it can make a difference between an A and a B for you or a B and a C for that matter. So make sure you're getting in there. Make sure you're, you're doing some prep and make sure you're hooking it up and doing as much as you can to get it functioning. If I keep scrolling, um, I have a planning page down here. I have a little subnetting chart that you can figure out what subnet you want to use for this. And then down here at the bottom, this is a planning map. Let me emphasize the word planning map that you can use to get your ideas down. You're not submitting this map to me because this is my work. You're going to submit your own network diagram from diagrams.net that you have typed up. But you can use this on when we go over the lab, the first day we go over the lab, you can use this to get your ideas down on paper, and then you can transfer it over to diagrams.net, export that, and submit it. Okay, So you can use this as a guide or a shell to get you going. Do not submit this to me with your numbers filled in. I, I will not even accept that. You need to do your own network map for this, just like you did in 120. You need to do your own network map for this. That is this piece right here. We're doing this day one to get your plan out. Okay, uh, But I put that down there so you had an idea of where to get started, how to get started on it. Um, and again, if we take a peek at the map, I even put some notes in there of like, um, here's the required access list you knew. Here's the bonus access list you can do for the phones. Here's a bonus thing you can do by implementing the uh, wireless access point into your network. Just so you know, there's the that's, that's kind of why I have that marked out for you. All right. So if I scroll back to the beginning, let's take a little closer look at what we need to do. Um, if we go down through the needs assessment, this is giving me my guide of what I need. Um, they're saying here the Opus computers, we have about 15 right now, and it's expected to grow to 45. Well, those numbers are key. 15 now means I need to make sure I have 15 switch ports and at least 15 IP addresses, and eventually it's going to grow to 45. Uh, so 45 switch ports and eventually 45 IP addresses. So this is letting me know about my switch size as well as my subnet size. That's what that's, 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 that's telling me. Um, and we're saying here they should be able to reach the Internet, so NAT DHCP. Um, they should be able to receive all this. 
So any kind of filtering I do, I need to make sure that gets done. IP phones is very similar. 15 now, eventually 45. Um, so I need to make sure I can accommodate the 15 right now. Um, in the future, I need to make sure my subnet's large enough to accommodate the 45. Wireless users um, will be, and, and here we're saying this needs to be secured from other traffic, so filtered, hence the access list. Um, and even here, I need this secured as well. So I'm thinking VLAN, VLAN for phones, VLAN for wireless users, and then also filtering for them too. That's the last line down here for access list. Um, and again, I need about, you know, 15 visitors, if you will, so I need a subnet of about that big um, that, that, I, that I need now. ISP, they're saying, hey, the ISP is going to give us a single IP address from this, this field of numbers, if you will. Well, why I'm sharing that is I want to make sure I avoid that number scheme. If the ISP is giving us a 172 blah, 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 I don't want to use 172 inside. Okay, so if the ISP is giving us 172 outside, I don't want to use 172 inside. So I want to use one of my other private schemes, my 10 or my 192. That way I'm avoiding as much confusion as possible. That's why that's being shared there. Um, down here, network design. Again, your your map. This is you're going to build your map on uh, diagrams.net. If I go back to D2L. I have a podcast here reminding you how you did your diagrams in 120. You did one for the Chapter 2 lab, and you did one for the Network Design lab. Um, so hopefully it's just a refresher to do this because you've done those tasks before. Um, you're basically just going to make a network map like I've been giving you all semester, but with your details in. So on your map, you're making sure you're using the right icons, making sure the, the devices are labeled, make sure your ports are labeled, uh, make sure the connections between them are clear as to what you're connecting you know get rid of those zigzag lines use the straight lines kind of thing um, make sure you're labeling vlans maybe even use a chart or color code if you need to you might want to indicate with them this subnet goes to this vlan this subnet goes to this vlan this subnet goes to this vlan to this group of users etc and you can even put that in a chart um, so you're showing that um, and then make sure you're indicating the ip addresses and subnet masks you're using on your ports um, when you're done with your diagram, make sure JPEG, PNG, PDF kind of thing so that D2L understands that. Okay, So make sure you have that game plan and make sure you export that to submit with your lab. Now, I have a great big hint here. Print a copy of this to bring to your lab, the lab room. You need your, your plan to implement your plan in the lab room. So make sure you're bringing a copy of your plan with you. Um, or, you know, export as a JPEG and email it to yourself so you have it to download to your desktop when you're in the lab room. Make sure you have a copy of your plan, okay? Uh, that's, your only, that's your only help when you're troubleshooting. Um, and if, and I noticed, I, I'm putting the word if there, if Mr. Brown helps you troubleshoot, first thing I want to ask for is where's your plan? Let me see your map so I know what you're doing. If you don't have one, all Mr. Brown can do is shrug his shoulders and walk away. I don't know what your plan is, so I don't know how to help you. Okay, so make sure you have a good plan and make sure you're bringing that. All right, part two in the lab room then. Uh, I remind you about the task you're doing. You're going to cable up and you're going to apply power to phones later. Uh, on the switch, you're configuring these tasks. These are the things you'll need to do. And same thing on the router, you're configuring these tasks. All right, um, and eventually voice over IP on you here, and then eventually the access list. And here I always put a note of like, after you, get, after you get everything working, then put your access list on. That way you're sure it's not the access list causing the issues. Um, and then here's a bonus one you can do if, if you have time, if you have time. And then here's the troubleshoot or the testing we're going to do. Um, PC into your uh, PC VLAN, um, actually PC into your phone, phone into a switch port. That'll test that connection. Uh, you'll plug the other phone into another phone port, and then the other PC you're going to plug into the Wi-Fi VLAN. So you can check the Wi-Fi VLAN traffic. And we're going to look to make sure we get an IP and can get out to Google. Same thing um, with the other PC here. Make sure we can get an IP and get out to Google. And then the phones, we're going to make sure we can call each other. Okay. Here's a whole bunch of troubleshooting reminders, and I remind you as well when you're done, make sure you're showing me the functionality. Now, to help in the the, the lab room, uh, if I scroll down here, here's your podcast for the design uh, map. Here's a helpful information file. This is almost like a great big notes file for pretty much any config we've done this semester. I compiled it all in one area for you. Maybe download this and have this hat handy. 
do before you get to the lab room, do when you get to the lab room kind of thing. And then here is private addressing, IP phone configuration, or uh, IP phone switch port configuration. Here's your VLANs, et cetera, et cetera, remote access. I tried to compile it all in one spot for you so you had an easy reference file for your lab.